Hey, a pleasant good day everyone. This is Joe Bora from Sports Fanatic News and this is going to be another NHL team preview. The Arizona Coyotes version and a Merry Christmas Eve to everybody. I hope everyone's having a great and festive holidays even in this time of COVID. Enjoy yourselves just safely and responsibly. But let's get right into it. Um, the hockey writers, um, they had them ranked at 24th coming into this season as a 24th team. The Coyotes of course finished Last season, four games over 500, just sneaking into the unique playoff structure at 33, 29, and 8, which gave them a 529 win percentage. So they're a team that's really in limbo. They, of course, have a guy still that they're paying out on long term IR, Marion Hosa, that gets over 5 million given to long term injury reserve for them. But they got Keller now getting hit on his big contract for 7.1. They, of course, brought in Phil Kessel, which for some, um, including myself, was a bit of a questionable uh, move at the time because that seemed more of a move for win now if you actually thought you could fully get to the next level and win now. And I don't think anyone thought the Coyotes were in the structure of being able to win the Cup. Uh, they were competitive and fun to watch last year. Don't get me wrong, but it would have definitely the key thing for Arizona is Darcy Kemper's health because Antti Ranta is a very good backup one-two combination, but we saw last year once Antti Ranta had to become the full number one and then they had to go to their third stringer as their backup, that's when they started to struggle because the Coyotes don't have the best overall defense OEL hasn't been his best overall game where he's more of a guy that's offensively inclined and good on defense and then lately the past couple of years his confidence just hasn't seemed fully there as a whole so he hasn't been his full self uh Chikrin and Goligoski really have been uh their two best and Chikrin's of course still a young cat himself uh developing and getting better and better each year and I think this is the year you see uh Jacob Chikrin uh, really take the leap and potentially be that defense enforcer and uh, OEL will try to be more of the offensive guy again and maybe things could fall into place more since you still got guys like Demirs as veterans, Goligoski as veterans in how and Jomerson. So maybe things can fall into place if Chikrin is able to take that big leap and just kind of be that good uh, guy that can get it done and anchor everything. And then Kyle Cababianco, another guy capable of offense, had about 40 points in the minors last year at 37. Um, and they projected him, and I agreed. I had him around um, at least 15 to 20 points in his first year to come in and then grow, where obviously uh, now uh, in a shorter season, that was in an 82-game season, He's still likely to get around the double-digit points if he comes up quick enough. If not, he's likely to put up, if he comes up at the end of the season, stretch run a good showing in a, say, 10-15 to 15 game stretch. Uh, he's a good defenseman. He can move the puck around. He just has to make his game a little bit more consistent. And then, of course, their top prospect, I don't think you're going to see him uh, much this year, <clears throat> um, if you do at all, is uh, Soderstrom, the 19-year-old uh, Swede. Uh, He's a beast. He's going to be um, very, very good. And then Jan Jenik is also a center at 20 years old. Killed the OHL. He had 56 points um, in 27 games. But I he might maybe, maybe get seen later in the year. I just don't um, see it necessarily this year either. I don't think the Coyotes have a reason to rush people up when they're a team that's kind of, like I said, in limbo. And brought in some guys like John Hayden, Tyler Pitlick, uh, Dryden Hunt, and Johan Larson just to kind of fill out those spots so they could let other guys develop. And uh, they do have a guy, though, that is playing in the World Juniors now. And uh, there he is, uh, John Ferranici, uh playing for Team USA. So see how he does as their fifth-ranked prospect. So this team does have... If they can get things come together, especially on the defensive front with Kobe Bianco coming up and Soderstrom and then Jenik in recent, in, in soon secession, excuse me. And then if Press, Pre, Prevestov, excuse me, um, their goaltender, can actually step up and become at least a good platoon guy, they got something building there as well. I'm sorry that I botched some of their uh, names. I know I have it written down. Uh, Provetov um, is how you say that, I believe. 
for um, Ivan, their goalie, uh, and he's been doing a good showing. Uh, he had a low twos goals against a two eight eight last year and a nine oh nine, and he seems to just keep getting better from all things I read um, through the hockey news and other um, structures as well online um, and following guys on elite prospects and their stats and so on and so forth. I think he has a chance to be a pretty uh, solid goalie. And then they, of course, have a guy like Mac Maselli as well on the left wing that keeps getting better. He put up 30 points last year. He's only 19. And so they got guys budding and developing in the minors. I like the Coyotes' future structure if they can get rid of some of these high cap hits at the top of the roster. That's the key. This year they got to work on trying to find a trade partner for Phil Kessel if he can get going. Derek Stefan, you don't have to worry about because he falls off after this year for 6-5. But their biggest key for me this year is finding a way to maybe put Goligoski and Jomerson into some picks as well if those guys have good years because I think Arizona is going to be a team, unfortunately this year, that will miss the postseason but they will be a very competitive, fun team to watch. They're just going to be right on the outside looking in, in my eyes, because they're they're in the Western Division that, yes, is not the toughest division to be in, but I would put, if I had to rank them, the Blues, the Vegas Golden Knights, Minnesota, Colorado, and depending how... Dubnik and others do, and the has been good with goalies over there in San Jose. San Jose's been a bounce-back team. They could be scrappy and force Arizona to battle um, for the fifth or sixth spot or seventh in this uh, division, and only the top four get in. So I believe Arizona's going to be on the outside looking in 28s around the 500 mark. They were only four over last year. I think this year they'll be under it by about three to four games. But there'll be a fun, competitive, scrappy team, and I also think there's a good shot to be under it because I'm not so certain Darcy Kemper is going to make it through the season with the Arizona Coyotes if he starts like a bat out of hell like last year, but their team still seems like they're not fully at the step to really get to the next step once the postseason hit. I feel like they're going to take advantage of his value, and that's what's going to then obviously start to bring down their win total, because then Antti Ranta becomes the starter, and then they have a decision of Aiden Hill or calling up Provetov already, which I think it would then be Aiden Hill at that point, and they'll have to see what that cat can do. But this has been a look ahead and an NHL team preview Arizona Coyotes edition. For Sports Fan News, I'm Joe Bork. Have a great and Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Peace out.